AMD was on quite a bit of a winning streak back in mid to late 2012 with its then all new GCN architecture. An architecture so well made that even today gamers regard it as AMD's fine wine technology. This architecture continued into all three of the big players in the console space including the PS4, the Xbox One, and even the Wii U. Today we're going to be talking about though the HD 7850. And what does this have to do with consoles? Well, it's often regarded as the most similar GPU to the PS4's GPU. So what you're seeing here is essentially the PS4's GPU in terms of performance. Now, I'm not sure if it is in terms of architecture. I don't know that. But performance-wise, it is the closest matching. Today, we're going to see how this old 7850 can hold up in modern games. And honestly, it did pretty well. Spoiler alert. And now onto the specifications on this mid-ranger from 2012. They include 1,240 shader cores, 64 TMUs, 32 ROPs, and 2 gigabytes of VRAM. Not too bad, but still, even 4 gigabytes is starting to be the bare minimum in 2023, so maybe it is pretty bad. And all that is VRAM Rise GDDR5. Not bad, still used today, and this is on a 256-bit bus. As for DirectX support, it is technically 12, although feature level is 11. But still, we can run DX12 games, not sure how that works with the feature level being only 11, but hey, I support it. It can get by pretty damn well. And now on to the games. The part you've probably been looking forward to. Let's go. Starting off the benchmark strong was Cyberpunk 2077, the most demanding game this GPU has ever played and probably ever will play again. At 720p, with the lowest settings at FSR set to performance, we saw an okay FPS of around 30 or so. It's kind of like that console experience, you know. Although it did look extremely jagged because of the lack of any AA, because I was fully off, you will still get by with a playable FPS, and it's quite impressive on this over 10 year old GPU. And it is also surprising because the feature level on this GPU is only 11, and this game requires 12, so. Pretty cool that it can even run. Overall, probably shouldn't buy this card for <laughs> playing this, but it's impressive. Not bad. Next up was GTA 5, and this time I took one of my comments I received into consideration and did it in a full lobby because that's apparently more demanding. With all that, and at high settings, we saw an average of around 55 FPS. The game still looked absolutely beautiful. Normally I run the game at normal and see over 100 FPS, so if you still want to see over 100, you can just crank everything down to normal. But, hey, why, why do that when you can have the game still run close to 60 and at high settings? So, this is at high settings, 1080p, you're going to get a beautiful FPS close to 60 FPS. GTA 5 is playable, not too surprising, it's an older game, but still, not bad. The Robot Girl game up next, nah, I'm just kidding, Atomic Heart was up next. And as a game released in early 2023, where most games have really bad optimization, this is one of the games that has some of the best optimization I've seen in any newer title. On this ancient GPU, we still average 75 FPS on lower settings, 1080p, which is... who can fault that? That's really damn good. Only time you're really ever going to dip is during large-scale explosions, but as you can see, even during this boss battle, it stays relatively high and playable above 60 most of the time, sometimes dipping into the 50s and below, rarely. But still, from the average of 75 or so, you're going to have a brilliant time. Still not sure if you should buy this game or GPU just to play this game, but it showed off itself pretty damn well. Not a bad experience. Testing Destiny 2 at two different resolutions up next, and it really depends on your playstyle. If you want to have that console experience and you're fine at running at 30 FPS, then you can set the resolution up to 1080p. But if you want to get a closer to 60 FPS average, then you're going to have to settle for 720p or so. Now both of these will be at the lowest possible settings, but it really depends just what you care more about, 30 FPS or 60 FPS. Either way, I'd probably go for 720p because it just makes it a lot easier to shoot at things. And that's what I actually did for a long time on this GPU. I originally played this on as my main GPU. For Destiny 2 for like 200 hours, so I got really used to it. So take it from me, you'll run it perfectly fine because you know 200 hours, not bad at all. Only at 720p though. Next up was Counter Strike 2, and I think this is a really good mix here because it's a hugely popular esports title, 
and a GPU that's a mid-ranger. A lot of people would pick up these old GPUs for esports titles like Fortnite, CS2, or CSGO back in the day. But just the same, you're going to see a perfect FPS on this GPU. I was running at medium settings, at FSR set to balanced, and I mean, I still bad the game, but it was a pretty good FPS overall. The map was like a mix of good detail and low detail. I didn't go through like different maps, but overall on this particular map, beautiful FPS, not bad at all, pretty easy to aim. Just wish I was better at the game. <laughs> not bad though. Next in Roblox up next, because it's a GPU that I could possibly see a lot of Roblox players using. Once again, Roblox is a not demanding game at all, so you can easily get by on a cheap GPU like this. Only costs 30 bucks, throw it inside a rig and you'll be off to the races. Most Roblox games will run perfectly fine on this GPU, unless it's one of the few demanding Roblox games out there. Can't really think of any offhand, maybe other than a showcase or something, which are purposely demanding on purpose. But for the vast majority of Roblox games, you'll be able to run at the highest settings at the engine cap of 60 FPS. Not bad at all. Roblox is an absolutely horrible engine, but still, the GPU powers through it. Not bad. Testing Fortnite up next, and remember what I said about the esports titles earlier? This GPU is quite good at them, and as you can see here, well, that's true. At the highest possible textures, not settings overall, but the highest textures, and the performance API set on, we see an FPS hovering around 100 or so, and I really had my best game ever on this GPU, so I'd say it's a perfectly fine GPU to play on, and if you're only playing stuff like esports titles, Fortnite, or whatever else, hey, this GPU's 30 bucks, why not go for it? And you can even get by in some DX12 games, so maybe it's a good deal? Who knows? Overall though, Fortnite was a great showcasing, not bad at all. Only will dip during large scale explosions and the drop from the bus. But that doesn't really matter because that's not most of the time. Minecraft up next, and I forgot to add this one in the last video, I'm sorry about that. I got a comment about that telling me to do it again, so here it is, and I'll keep it forever. Every video from now on. Minecraft ran at what you would expect was a brilliant FPS, and that it is. Minecraft can run on pretty much anything. It could probably run on a GT 210 at 100 FPS, so it's not surprising that we saw a 400 or so average FPS on this GPU. Now, when you kick it over to shaders, eh, you take a massive, massive, massive hit in terms of um, FPS just for those visuals, with an average FPS of around 30 or so. And the frame times are also quite bad as well. It's not like a smooth console 30 FPS. It just, it feels worse than 30 FPS. It says 30 or high 20s, but it feels more like, Windows notification, it feels more like 10 or 15. I don't know what it is, but if you really want to play with shaders, you can, but I'd just stick without them for now. Overall, Minecraft without shaders, 100% awesome stuff. Now for the conclusion of this GPU. Now, unlike most GPU videos that I've done where I say I can't recommend them due to them being too old or something along those lines, I'd say this GPU I can recommend to a certain variety of people. If you're just playing the light games out there, like TF2, Minecraft, I don't know, CS2 and whatnot, I'd say why not? If you're on a tight budget, it's only 30 bucks, at least in Canada, so it did respectably well. A 10 year old card running games like Cyberpunk, it's not bad at all. Although still I would recommend a GTX 1650 over this card, you're gonna have a much better time with 2 extra gigabytes of VRAM and all that, but hey, if you're on the super tight budget and you need like a temporary GPU, because this is not a long term GPU, <laughs> it's like 10 years old, you do not want to hold on to this GPU for too long, but if you need an emergency GPU, it's doable, why not? Go for the 1650 though. Overall though, thank you so much for watching. I have some awesome stuff coming, such as some really, really old GPUs. So do stick around for those. Mad trucks. Do hope you've enjoyed though. Stick around. Peace.